Hello friends, welcome to another video of Zeta Axis and today we will discuss about air friends. In our previous video, we have seen that different kinds of air masses are formed based on the characteristics of the region below them. If it is cold, then we see cold air masses formed. If the region below is hot, then we see hot or warm air masses formed. We have also seen that when cold air mass tries to replace warm air mass, it is called cold front. It is indicated by these kind of lines having triangles, where triangles indicate the direction of movement of the front. Similarly, when warm air mass replaces cold air mass, then it is called warm front. The boundary is called warm front. It is indicated by these kind of lines having semicircles on it, where the semicircle indicates the direction of movement of front. Similarly, we have the third front, which is called occluded front, where a warm air mass is trapped between cold masses on both the sides, and slowly over the time, the cold air masses are able to uplift the warm air mass and it loses contact with the ground. And such kind of fronts are called occluded front, which are indicated by these kind of lines, where there is the alternate of triangle and semicircles. Now we will discuss the fronts in detail. So first front is cold front, and we will discuss what kind of processes or phenomena occur on these fronts. So in our previous video, we have seen that when a cold air mass tries to replace warm air mass, it is called cold front. And it is indicated by this kind of lines. Here in this example, we have a cold air mass, which is moving and replacing the warm air mass. Now because this cold air mass is very heavy compared to the warm air mass, it is easily able to uplift the warmer air. We can see that at this front, this is the cold front. We see that at this cold front, there is rapid rise of warm air. And because warm air has moisture, we see formation of clouds over here. These clouds are generally cumulonimbus clouds which give lots of rain. Therefore, the cold fronts are associated with heavy rain. Sometimes thunderous clouds, which are large cumulonimbus clouds are formed over here. They give a persistent and very heavy rainfall in these regions. You can see an example of this. Therefore, the cold fronts are associated with heavy rainfall. Now let's see details of warm front. We have already seen cold front. Now we will see warm front. So in warm front, a warm air mass moves towards cold air mass replacing the cold air. It is indicated by this kind of line having semicircles where the circles indicate direction of movement of the front. Now here in, in this diagram we see this is the cold air mass and this is the warm air mass. Remember, cold air is more denser, therefore more heavier, while warm air is less denser, therefore lighter. So the warm air is not able to displace the cold air as the cold air is able to displace warm air. Therefore, there is a very slant or very slow movement of this warm air mass which moves it slowly. There is a very smooth, gentle slope formed at this boundary. So at the warm front, which is over here, we can see that air slowly rises up smoothly over this slope. Clouds are also formed at this slope. We see that as these clouds move upper and upper, they form changes. This warm front is spread over a very large region. And because the upliftment of air is very slow, therefore we do not see that much rain. Rain does occur on these fronts, but it is relatively less compared to cool fronts. Moreover, this front affects a very larger area because the distance from here to here is very large compared to the cold front. Another phenomenon which occurs at warm front is that sequential clouds are formed. Here in this diagram we see that the clouds at the lowest position are formed and when they move up slowly, they form changes. They change their structure and their shape. At the lowest location, we get nimbostatus clouds. Then we see autostatus clouds. These clouds further change as they move higher the slope, they convert into cirrostatus and then cirrus clouds. So, sequential clouds are formed in this warm front and they move along this slope. Now, let's see occluded fronts. We have already seen that occluded fronts are formed when warm air mass is trapped between cold air masses on both sides. Slowly, the cold front is able to uplift the warm air mass over from the ground. As you can see here, the warm air mass has lost its contact from the ground. 
these kind of fronts are called occluded front and it is indicated by these kind of lines so there are two types of occlusion warm occlusion and cold occlusion in warm occlusion we see that the coldest air mass is on the right side while a cooler air mass is trying to move towards it in the cold occlusion we see that cool air mass is on the rightmost side and cold air mass is trying to move towards its direction now let's see the difference between two one by one the first we will take warm occlusion in this we can see that here we have a cool air which is moving and there is a warm air so we see a boundary is formed and this is like a cold front boundary so the air is rapidly uplifted over here forming cumulonimbus clouds while at this juncture we have a warm front and the air is gently moved along the slope forming other types of clouds which give less rain compared to the cumulonimbus clouds now at this juncture when the warm air is completely uplifted we see that cool air mass comes in contact with cold air mass but the cold air mass is heavier therefore when this cool air mass moves further it gets uplifted now here we see that cool air mass is moving up now we see a gentle clouds are formed like clouds are formed at the warm front now what happens in cold occlusion we see that the cold air mass starts to move towards here where there is a warm air mass there is a rapid upliftment of warm air here we again see a warm front like structure where we see a gentle slope because warm air mass is trying to replace the cool air mass so we see a warm front like structure where the air rises slowly and smaller clouds are formed which give less rain but when we reach the juncture of these two the cool air mass is lighter compared to the cold air mass so the cold air mass is able to uplift the cool air mass and we see that here again cumulonimbus clouds are formed as well as other simpler clouds are also formed so we see that here both types of clouds are there while in the warm occlusion we saw only one type of clouds moreover here the air mass on this direction is also getting replaced over here while in the warm occlusion we saw that the cool air mass which was coming was getting uplifted in this both diagrams we can see the comparison here only one type of clouds are formed over here but in this cold occlusion we see that cumulonimbus as well as the simpler clouds are also formed here we can see that this cold air mass is not uplifted this cool air mass is uplifted while here in this diagram we see that this cool air mass is uplifted and this air mass moves further now let's do some quick comparison of warm front and cold fronts the first characteristics we will see is speed of the front how fast these fronts move the cold front is very fast compared to the warm front which is slow the reason is that in the cold front we see the cold air is moving which is heavier compared to the warm air therefore this heavier cold air is quickly able to uplift the warm air but when we come to the warm front we see that the warm air is moving now warm air is lighter compared to the cold air therefore this warm air is not quickly able to uplift the cold air and therefore it moves very slowly let's see what kinds of air are replaced at the cold front the cold air mass replaces the warm air mass we see that this air mass will move and wherever there was warm air mass it will be replaced by cold air mass at the warm front the warm air mass replaces the cold air mass air uplifted at the cold front we can see that the warm air is uplifted because warm air is lighter than the cold air even at the warm front we see that the warm air is uplifted because again warm air is lighter compared to the cold air rain so how much amount of rain occurs at these fronts at the cold fronts we have seen because of the rapid rise of these warm air a large cumulonimbus clouds are formed which gives lot of rain there is a very heavy rain for at these fronts while at warm fronts we see that the clouds are evenly spread over a very large area and they do not give that much rain therefore the rain is very heavy at cold front while the rain is less to moderate at the warm fronts the next characteristic is type of cloud form at these fronts at the cold front because the air rapidly rises we see cumulonimbus clouds formation which gives very heavy rain 
while at the warm front we see sequential clouds are formed the clouds which are formed at the front are nimbostratus and as they move they transform into different types and we can see here that there are different sequence of clouds over here the next characteristic is area influenced the cold fronts are spread over a very smaller area compared to the warm air front we can see that this warm air front can go several hundreds of kilometers because it is having a very gentle slope therefore it affects a very large area while the cold fronts are spread across very small region it could be around 50 60 or around 100 km but not like warm fronts where they influence hundreds of kilometers therefore the cold front affects a smaller region compared to the warm front if you like this video then please like subscribe and share we will be making videos on other geography topics so please subscribe us and press the bell icon thank you